Hello and welcome to Experimental Gameology. My name is James and today we're going to look at how to create a character for original Dungeons and Dragons. Today using only the Men and Magic book, the first of the th first three books of um, Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, part of the character creation process will be familiar to anyone who's played Dungeons and Dragons insofar as you have six characteristics and they're listed here as strength, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, dexterity and charisma. Um, what might be a, a surprise is that not the player roles, but the referee roles. Um, in order, it seems, based on the fact that players later don't get a choice to switch uh, stats around. Once the stats are rolled on 3d6 um, each, uh, then the uh, player can choose a character class. Um, there are no limitations on which class they can choose, but there are only three classes in the, in the original book. Fighting men, magic users, and clerics. Um, it's also possible to choose to be a dwarf or a halfling, in which case you would be a fighting man, um, or an elf, um, in which case uh, you can choose uh, each adventure whether you want to be a fighting man or a magic user for that day. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you can then choose to modify uh, your prime requisites. So for fighting men, that would be strength, for magic users, intelligence, for clerics, wisdom, uh, based on a sort of a trade basis amongst these top three. Um, so you have to pay attention to how much you have of one attribute you have to spend to raise your prime attribute. And there is also a rule down here which says you mustn't lower it uh, any one stat below nine whilst you're doing that. Um, you can then record uh, various modifiers. Um, note that um, the modifiers are neither sort of standardized as they are in third and fourth and fifth editions of D&D, uh, nor are they as um, many as they are in uh, basic Dungeons and Dragons or in advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there are some uh, some charisma modifiers for number of hirelings and loyalty. Um, there are modifiers based on prime requisite for getting XP. Um, Constitution will either give you one or minus one to your hit dice and various percentages to survive adversity. Um, and then dexterity will either give you a plus one or a minus one to attack and that's all you get. Um, as somebody's commented uh, on forums that I've read, uh, the main advantage you really get from attributes is modifiers to uh, experience, um, and which means you'll progress faster and you'll get better at things faster. Um, there's a note on languages. Um, there are um, there's the common tongue. And there are also alignment languages. Um, there are only three alignments in, in original Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, law, neutrality, and chaos, um, and your character will speak one of those alignment languages in addition to common and in addition to racial languages. Um, there are immediately rules for hiring non-player characters before you can get to the equipment. Um, you get 3d6 times 10 gold. Um, potentially you might have enough to hi have a, a hireling to begin with, but only if you roll really well. Otherwise there's uh, equipment here, some of which you can afford at first level and some of which you definitely can't, like boats down here. Um, the equipment list is not particularly explained, so it's not really explained what Wolfsbane, Spain, uh, Garlic, Belladonna do. I think you're supposed to just know that. Um, the lore about that um, from fantasy literature. Um, the encumbrance system is is rather um, straightforward in a way. It's not counting every single item. Uh, some things uh, like various armor uh, and weapons do have weights given, um, but there is a miscellaneous equipment uh, weight of 80 for all your other bits and bobs. So it's not the most clunky um, encumbrance system, actually. Uh, then we have the tables you would expect differential tables of experience for each character class um and um of course we have the uh the table here which not only gives your hit dice um now in um original in, in men and magic in the first three books we're only talking about d6 um for hit dice and indeed for weapon damage um so a, a fight a fighting man gets uh, one d6 plus one uh, whereas a magic unit only gets that actually at second level, gets it just a d6 at, at first level. Um, there's also talk uh, of possibly it being the case that people would have to re-roll these dice um, at each level. So you might roll a 6 and plus 1 have 7 hit points at first level, and at second level you might roll your 2d6 and get, you know, 3 and a 5, uh, sorry, a 3 and a 2 and get 5 hit points, and your hit points might actually go down. I'm not sure how much that was really played, how much people just added like they do now, but that's the possibility that it was done like that. Um, so 
that's really it. I mean, the rest is sort of combat rules, which I don't want to go into today. Um, the alternative combat system is very much uh, the D20 system, although it is given as a table. Um, and then, yeah, you choose your spells. If you're a cleric, you get to um, uh, turn undead. Um, the spell lists are very simple. And you would write this all down not on a character sheet, because there were no character sheets, um, but you might do it on a card, like as it's suggested um, here in the book. Um, although very little information is actually given uh, on this particular card. Um, or you may well have your uh, uh, three-ring notebook and three-ring lined paper and write it on that. And all of the early uh, D&D uh, characters I've seen, and also characters from uh, campaigns which you know predated uh, the publication of D&D, are just on lined paper. I think that's more or less how people, how people did it back then. Um, of course, you can indeed create character sheets, and I will um, link uh, some of the ones I've created uh, just for fun uh, in the links below. Um, but that's really it. Um, there's, it's quite a simple process. Um, there are actually some other abilities which are not um, given here. In, for example, in uh, Underworld and Wilderness Adventures, uh, there are rules about uh, detecting uh, secret doors and so on. Um, and indeed, there are some, some racial abilities also mentioned uh, under uh, dwarves and, and halflings here. Um, again, they, I suppose, could go on, on your three-ring notepaper or on your, or on your character sheet if you create one. Um, and this was just the first, um, as I said, the, the, the first book of the first three books. Um, and in fact, the next book, Greyhawk, um, significantly increases... Um, options and complexity and I will um, deal with that in a future video. So um, I hope this video was useful just to give an overview of how to create a character in, in original Dungeons and Dragons. Um, please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.